So you've got your discovery process on lock. Now let's make it automated with our workflow automation. So with this, there are a couple things you're going to want to get set up first. First, let's make sure your pipeline is set up the way that you would like. So here is your pipeline where you're going to get all of your opportunities. We want to make sure that you have the stages that you actually are going to use in your process. And you can manage all of that here in your workspace settings. So you're going to move your uh, opportunities and prospects through each phase in your process. And our workflow automations are going to be based on each of these stages. So let's say you want to have a stage for review. You want to make sure that's in here uh, for proposals, uh, when you put things on hold. Um, when you have an inquiry first to come in, the main piece that you want to make sure is this stage type. Uh, the primary piece that matters here is this closed lost is now not going to count when you look at your forecast. So uh, use these stage types kind of intermit, uh, kind of uh, all around um, on hold and closed lost. You'll be able to sort those uh, out by stage uh, as you want to see in your forecast. More on that to come. Mostly, you want to get each of your labels all set for which stages you're going to use in your workflow process. We also want to set up some forms. This is going to help you automate your workflow uh, by pulling in questions that you ask from every single person. So let's take a look at creating a form together. So here is a discovery form. You have a text box that's just a plain uh, text with a RTF. Uh, you can add in whatever information you want here at the top and you can, of course, format that as necessary. You'll also, of course, want to include some spaces for uh, information. And each of those blocks, you'll want to make sure that not only do you have it set up, you can uh, add columns if you would like, but you also want to make sure that you have the reporting field name and all of the mapping created correctly. So if this is your question for first name, you'll want to make sure you add in the name, first name, and also map it to first name because this is going to tell your automation how to talk to your customer. You'll be able to drop in their first name based on what they enter here in your form basically like magic, but you need to at least uh, set up this mapping correctly. So same first name and last name, uh, you'll want to do the same for email and you can toggle on and off these required questions. So you'll add in, of course, this reporting field name and you can also map this to the email address. The name comes more into play when you use these questions. Uh, this is a multiple choice question. You can see you have a few options over here where you have shorter text, longer text. You can have check boxes where you have multiple options, uh, single options. Uh, you have a select box if you prefer to do a drop down. Uh, you'll be able to add in as many options as you like, but you want to make sure you've used this reporting field name. This is going to tell your workflow automation which answer it's looking for and the uh, types of answers that are there. So you want to make sure you enter that uh, as you create your questions. You can add in as many questions as you like. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you ask uh, some qualifying questions. So if you're not going to accept anyone whose budget is out of your range, you could ask a budget question. Same for if you only want to take ongoing projects, then you can add in a question about that as well. And then you can take this form and embed it into your website by clicking share. You can get a direct link. So you could put that like in your email signature uh, if you have a newsletter or you could um, embed it directly into your website. After you all completed. You'll want to make sure that you uh, you can send a confirmation email template and you want to make sure that you're going to add this submission to one of the stages in your pipeline, which is why we set that up first. So I'm going to enter, this is a discovery form. So this is an inquiry. Uh, you can send a redirect to back to your website. You can send a confirmation email and you can also add in a custom response. So once this has been submitted, uh, this page will switch to the, your response has been submitted or anything that uh, you decide to write in there. 
Now let's take a look. Now you've got your form created. Now we want to make sure that we have all of the automated emails that you'll want to send. So think through your process. If you'll want someone to enter a discovery form, then they get uh, an automatic email back to them that says, thanks so much. Yes, I definitely want to work with you. Let's set up a meeting or no things. Uh, I don't think I'm quite the right fit for you. Let's set up a couple of those email templates. That's here in workspace settings. And then you'll click on templates and you want to go to emails. So you can create kind of this no thank you um, and you can use the first name from your form. That's that token that we created. Uh, and you can uh, set up a no thank you email and you can set up a, a meeting email. So let's say you want to uh, take those qualified leads that do fit in to your budget or your time frame. Uh, and you want to say, yes, let's set up a meeting, you'll create uh, this email template. Again, you can use that form first name from these tokens over here. And you'll also want to use uh, your meeting token as well. So yes, you could copy your uh, meeting link, but you'll want to use this meeting token uh, here instead. And then if you click on this token, uh, this functions as a link. So if you don't want that, uh, the meeting name to show up and you want to have words instead, you'll simply copy and cut that and then you can link it to any word that you would like. So that will function as a link and now that will work as a meeting link. Uh, that's how tokens function inside your email templates. You can go more in depth on all of the things you can templatize uh, by checking out our help center that's here at the question mark in the upper right. So now we've got a couple of automatic emails set up. Let's get into your workflow automations. You can click here, workflow automations, and you can see we've got this discovery created. So you'll always start from some, uh, an opportunity going into a stage in your pipeline. This one is set up for when it enters into that inquiry form. And then I'm going to use my budget question as the question to decide whether or not I want to work with this client. So I'm going to use my form answer that this budget is greater than $1,000. Um, and so if you remember back to when I created the form, I labeled my field ID budget. So that is going to tell my automation to read this. And I want it to be in this range. I could also add a condition. Let's say I also want to work with people who... Uh, who uh, the date, uh, the length is going to be uh, ongoing. So I want to make sure that um, my payment is going to be greater than $1,000 and that the length is ongoing. I'm going to use this operator and here. So that means in my form, someone either someone has to say, yes, their budget is greater than $1,000 and they want ongoing work with me. And then I'll save that. Now, if someone... Uh, makes those two correct answers for my form, they will get this email. So I'll take this yes, and they will get an automatic email from me that says, thank you so much. Let's have a meeting. Uh, I, I do that by uh, dragging my send an email widget over here. And then from there, I will choose my email template that is for a meeting. You can see that here. I'll select who it's from. And I will say that I want that to go to the form email. That's the email that we mapped right from that form. And then you would click and drag this over to your uh, your created email. Same thing for you don't quite want to work with that person. You'll set up uh, an automated email that says, not right now, but I would love to talk with you more. Um, or if you have a favorite freelancer that might work a little bit different than you, this would be a great opportunity for you to recommend them too. That is how your workflow automations work. And these can be as simple or as complicated as you would like. Then once one of your discovery Sorry, went through that quick. Yeah, you'll hit publish here uh, before it begins working. Uh, from there, you'll see in your pipeline, when you get uh, a form filled out that drops into your inquiry, you'll be able to see that here in your pipeline. You'll also get a notification as well as an email, and you'll be able to see that those have been created. When you click into your opportunity and click on automations, now you can see that this has gone through my automation process. You can see that it 
took these uh, processed, it, it used my decision, and then it sent the appropriate email. Um, and then from here, I can also change these stages and I can use these workflow automations to do tons of other things. Like if you want a review, I could uh, enter my uh my stage to be review request. And then I'll run a different automation that waits a certain amount of time after they enter review request and then sends them a review email. So let's say that I worked with this client, everything went great. I'm going to change their stage from uh, whatever I worked with them in to review request. And then in my workflow automations, I'll have set up this review request where as soon as they enter into the review request pipeline, I will wait for a set amount of time, any set amount of time you'd like. You're going to pull that widget over from the left here, wait for, and then you'll choose your time period. And then I'll send them this, uh, this email that is my review request. So here's what that looks like after I've got it all filled out here. There's a huge thank you. It's great to hear from you. Here is my review request email. That way, that process is all automated for you and you don't have to think about it. Again, there are lots of complicated and simple ways that you can use your pipeline and your automation tools as well. You're going to see as you create projects or agreements, all of those will get um, a little icon that will tell you, oh, this project was created based out of this opportunity, or this agreement was created out of this opportunity. So you'll always be able to link that back here. You'll be able to see this activity and lead information. Um, you can see here are the emails that got sent from my automation to uh, this person who filled out my form. And I I didn't have to touch any of it besides getting things set up. That is a super quick and very uh, a lot of an overview for automations. As you have questions, we are more than happy to help you or take notes and watch this video as often as you need to. Uh, you can always ask questions here in our help center by using the question mark in the upper right corner.